Hope you all had a fantastic Christmas, and if you did, then you really want to sit back, settle down, and watch our best of the guests. First up is Theatre Loving Peter. Theatres have been one of the hardest hit areas of entertainment over the past year. Thankfully many productions are getting back on stage, such as everybody's talking about Jimmy and Le Miz in London's West End. I caught up with theatre lover Peter, who is still a bit tentative about taking his seat in the stalls. So it's been a while since you've been to the theatre, Peter. And I know that you're not planning to return in the near future, but I'm sure you are looking forward to returning to the theatre at some stage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, theatres are open at the moment, but uh, of course with social distancing guidelines and all of that, it's uh, a bit difficult. Um, I'm not sure whether you have to wear a mask really at the moment, and I don't really want to do that. But. Um, if you got the opportunity to go, here we are in uh, you know, London's West End. It's all open. Well, of course, everybody's talking about Jamie as one of the first musicals, the first theatre performances to have returned. And you've already seen it, Peter, but before the pandemic. Oh, yes, yes, a couple of years ago I saw it. It's a very good show. And of course, there's a film version of it coming up this year as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I so know. you learn something every day I on do. this show. I learn something every day. And uh, just up the road is, well, the next theatre is, what's the theatre? Oh, the Guildwood. Uh, it's uh, Le Miserable, which uh, I've seen two or three times over the years. Um, brilliant show. I love it to bits. And while we were outside the Prince of Wales Theatre, a tour guide told us the story about when the Beatles appeared on the Royal Variety performance at the Prince of Wales. John Lennon decided to have a joke at the Queen Mother's expense, saying, Would the people in the cheapest seats clap your hands, and the rest of you, if you just rattle your jewellery? When they done the, uh, the Royal Variety show, yeah. jangle your jewellery. Do you remember when he said, people at the front, put your hands up, people at the back, Raise your jewellery. Okay. It was a Queen's show. Yeah, yeah. The, the Royal Variety show. Right. That was, that was it. That's where it was. At the Prince of Wales. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks. Who could forget our Eurovision super fan Donna? She got Jules Poin. We have Donna, a Eurovision super fan. <laughs> no half measures here. Oh my. Oh my God. Rise like oh, a that's... phoenix. Oh, is oh, uh, oh, uh, Conchita. I'm now Conchita first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like my flags? Like this, my flags. Oh my Paul. God. This one will be on Paul. Wow. You have a lot. You have, I think one of them is Cyprus, right? Well, they're, they're all Eurovision. Yeah. So you are known for singing in the care homes before the pandemic have you ever I sung am. any eurovision songs have i sung are you are you mad i do a eurovision themed an hour if i can do an hour how do you have enough material for an hour i do um i do a lot from the 60s a yeah. lot from the 70s uh, a few from the 80s and i even do some obscure songs that nobody remembers except me can you give us an example of example? which ones you would be singing? Yes, like, yes, the I do. Names of the songs. I mean, um, in 1985, uh, Austria sent Gary Lux oh, along right. to the Eurovision. Yeah, lovely, handsome man he was. <laughs> and uh, I managed, and I've always loved the song. And I managed to uh, find a because uh, he sang the song obviously in in German, and uh, and I was able to get the. Um, the English version and the right. English backing track, and away I went. It, it came sixth, was it sixth, I think, or eighth? Oh. It came eighth in the show, I think, with 60 points. Oh, wow. But nobody remembers that song, unless you're Austrian, of course. Oh. 
Uh-huh. And I, I fit that one in. I do Bobby Socks. Do you, uh, are you old enough to remember Bobby Socks, the the, uh, the group that went for Norway in the 1980s? I do uh, Let It Swing, right. Let It Rock and Roll, as well as some uh, songs which actually won the competition. Oh, I do cool. um, I Boom, Bang, a Bang. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah, 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 yeah. I do Puppet on a String. Mm-hmm. I do all kinds of everything from Dana. Marcus will know that one. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, and yes. Uh, and I can do an hour, or probably over an hour, really, oh, of oh. that Eurovision song. So around about this time, the care homes, they know that I like the Eurovision, so they ring me up and they ask me for a Eurovision theme. I'm probably one of a few people that are actually doing that at the moment thank you very much for joining us on this um call um well this is graham norton it's it's a pleasure seeing graham norton oh my god you (laughs) haven't seen it for ages i've got my yeah i've got my got everything i need for my uh eurovision night i just can't wait now yeah um anyway donna Thank you very much for speaking with us today. And yeah, I'm sure we will catch up with you. Um, I'll I'll be texting you on the night. Will do. Thank you very much for your time, Donna. Okay. Was I knowledgeable enough? Oh, fantastic. And basically, (laughs) the time with the flags. I love it. (laughs) Basically, we. Nice to see Ireland there too, behind. Yeah. 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 No, but. Pride, pride of place there. <laughs> we heard all about the latest tech with expert Jalen. Uh, Jalen, a technology podcaster. So how long have you been doing these podcasts? And can you tell us about your podcast? Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been doing podcasting for more than a year now, almost uh, one and a half years. So it has been a while. I've made over uh, 70 episodes. Um, it's a tech focused podcast. So we go over uh, different tech stories like Apple, uh, OnePlus, Samsung, all of those tech companies. Um, and, and I interview guests on the show as well as just talk about some of the tech comes out every single week. Do you know which phone would be good for? Social media, say, posting stuff on YouTube. I honestly think uh, from Sony, their Xperia uh, 1 Mark II is a great phone for making these uh, special uh, sorts Mm. of content because of their software and their pro video and photo apps. But uh, also iPhones have been really good for this content creation stuff as well, just because it's a really popular phone. And a lot of these social media apps uh, f- focus more on uh, creating these apps towards the iPhone. So the iPhones have better compatibility. And overall, their quality of video is really great. Oh, what is your podcast called again? Uh, yeah, my podcast is called True Tech. I cover multiple tech topics on it, uh, from ranging from tech news, tech reviews, and interviews uh, as well. You also speak about apps and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I I do speak about apps, and I actually have a episode planned about a new app I use uh, called Notion because that app is great for uh, organizing all the stuff you do, um, and it's good for content creators like YouTubers or podcasters. Uh-huh. It really helps you stay organized of all the tasks you're doing and different video projects you have planned. Okay. That's a really interesting app. I think I need to look that up. Who can forget our big quiz show superfans, Sharon and Jen, vied for victory. So how much do you know about the show? It's time now for our big quiz. (laughs) So thanks for joining us for this quiz today. Yay. Two of our biggest I super did fans. Study. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to see how much you know about the show. <laughs> did we take the Yay. quiz? Yay! I guess <laughs> I'm going to say Jen's going to win. 
So during the Eurovision episode, Paul and I did a beer tasting session. What were the four countries um, of the featured beers on the Eurovision special? So what countries did the four beers come from on that episode? I can give you a clue. They're all in Europe. <laughs> oh, no, I remember two of them. Just write it down. Oh. Well, you might have to guess. I'm sorry. Germany, UK, and I don't remember the last one, so I wrote Bira. Okay, right. Bira uh, comes from, from Italy. And Jan says Germany, UK, France, and Ireland. Well, we have a winner. <clears throat> I can reveal that the countries were the UK or Britain, Germany. It's getting tense now because you both got those two, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Spain and Italy. Bera um, Moretti. I forgot. From Bera. Italy. Oh, I forgot Italy. that. Italy. It's Italian. Italian? <laughs> I just, it was brainwashed into my head because you guys kept saying it. No. I, like, I haven't had that in a while. <laughs> and Sad Miguel is something yeah. I usually have. <laughs> Filipinos have that. <laughs> I think you're going to make wine there. <laughs> we should all be looking after our teeth. So I find out more from my dentist, Dr. Jason Burns. Okay. This might be a controversial one, but mouthwash, before or after brushing? Uh... <laughs> Well, it's a very interesting question um, because the term halitosis was actually invented in the late 50s, early 60s by Listerine and they invented the term halitosis and did a big advertising campaign and then about six months later, lo and behold, they had the solution for it, which was Listerine mouthwash. So they created a problem people didn't realise they had then they created a, a solution. Unfortunately, mouthwashes don't actually do very much. They have no real effect um, other than make your mouth feel a bit fresher and, and in the same way as you chew gum for bad breath it, it's the same thing they don't actually clean your teeth and they don't actually improve your 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 general oral health and paul had a couple of questions for jason as well he was eager to know whether we should rinse after brushing i don't think it makes a lot of difference I don't think it makes a lot of difference, to be honest with you. I don't think that, you know, you're not, you haven't got enough toothpaste in your mouth to actually cause you any harm. I mean, if you okay. sort of swallow a whole tube of toothpaste, it's probably worth rinsing it out. <laughs> but um, if, if it's just, no, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference. Because I think I read somewhere that if you rinse it out, you rinse out all the, all the ingredients that you try to input into your mouth. Yeah. So I don't know. So that's why I haven't been rinsing my mouth ever since I saw that um, news on the news or something. But your saliva is going to wash most of that away. Okay, fine. Anyway. So it, it, it's okay. As I said, I don't think there's, I don't think there's enough good. I, you know, these sort of things get thrown about. And they sound good in theory, but I think the actual practicality doesn't make any. It doesn't mm. make any difference at all. It's how well you brush your teeth. Yeah. You don't even need to use toothpaste. I mean, if you brush, if you, it, it, it's the brushing that removes the things that damage your teeth, not the toothpaste. The toothpaste just makes it into a more pleasant experience. Well, I'll certainly be putting more effort into my brushing technique. During our trip to Brighton, we caught up with local resident mullers who took us on a tour of the city's restaurant scene. So I'm here with my good old friend. I, I know not not really old, but my good, <laughs> my good long time friend, Mullers, and we've just had a lovely meal at the Regency, which is one of the restaurants in Brighton that he recommended. So um, we've had a really nice meal. Um, what what is it about the Regency that you like, John? Well, first of all, it's uh, it's been here for many years, more, more years than I care to remember. <laughs> 
Um, it's, it's reliable. Um, I think it either features in uh, Graham Greene's Brighton Rock or it features in the film um, with Richard Attenborough. Yeah. Um, but the fish is excellent and on a nice day, which is not quite so good today, it's a bit grey. It's yeah. really nice to sit outside, obviously, like it is everywhere, mm. um, and have lunch in the sun. But today hasn't uh, the sun hasn't smiled. It hasn't smiled us. But of course, you've got fantastic views of the of the sea from here as well, and it's right it's right right on the right on the seafront. Um, so you, you couldn't ask for any, for anything. Well, more, you've got the seafront. You've got yeah. the uh, the I360 or the, mm. I, the eyesore, I think as yeah. some people call it. I've been on it. I've been on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of heights. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a bit claustrophobic, so I'm, yeah. I, you're, bra you're braver than I am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you've got the windmills out there. Some the wind <laughs> um, Tur turbines, turbines. Tur I think I've been told they are. Yeah. <laughs> turbines. Um, and the traffic's no problem because yeah. it just keeps going on by. And if you're on your own, you can sit there and watch the traffic go yeah. by and people watch or um, just enjoy your fish and chips. Or I'll, I'll tell you what else we spotted earlier, and I don't know if you watched my, my opposition, Susan Calvin, who does a few travel yes, shows yeah. and stuff. She went to the Upside Down House. Have you... Oh, no, I haven't been there. I'm yeah. just looking at it now. Yeah. I've only had a glass of wine, but I think I'm... <laughs> I was looking at it. It is house. actually upside I down. I think, does it really? Should it be that angle? You know. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, if you if you watch back that show, I think I think anybody could go in there for a tour or whatever. But um, you probably have to book it. But everything's hanging from the ceiling. The furniture is hanging off. Oh really? So you've got this. You know, you you feel as though that you are actually upside down. Yeah. Oh, well, I could do that. After after a few glasses of rosé at the uh, well, the Regency, uh, yes, you yeah. might not even need to go to the house. We were saying uh, that Brighton is actually crammed with restaurants yeah. and uh, you know some good some bad and uh, but the Regency has been here as I say for so long that it's always a good it's always a safe bet yeah and, uh, I think I said we've just had a very, very nice lunch. Indeed. Skate and yeah. chips. Fantastic. What more could you want? In, indeed. And I, I had some lovely squid. And, you know, yeah. it, it really was like squid, I find, can be hit, hit or miss. It can be really salty sometimes. Yeah. But it was absolutely perfect. Yes, yes. And I think this is a good point to say <laughs> thank you, Mullers. That's my, my pleasure entirely. We're uh, being photobombed. And, 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 uh, welcome to Brighton. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> buying some rock sure this is gonna screw up my teeth but who cares that's why I go to the dentist for <laughs> next up is the chap from Abingdon we bumped into who was an absolute font of knowledge of the town it is lovely we used to live here in Abingdon and we lived at St Edmunds again Oh yeah. And uh, we never came into the church, would you believe it? But this is the Until first time. now. <laughs> it's funny, okay, when you, li when you live somewhere. You all my life. Have you? Wow. Wow. Got married in this church 63 years ago. Wow. Mm. I was there the day. Oh my goodness. 63 years ago. Gosh. Wow. I'm still married. Congratulations. That's amazing. It's a lovely church. I've always, I've always just loved just looking at it, you know, just sort of standing and admiring it. Uh, a few years ago, the interior was altered. Oh, okay. So uh, the, the oh, wow. was removed. Uh -huh. About five, ten years ago, right. the interior was moved, altered. Right. Why was that? Was that to do with flooding? I don't, I don't know why. Something, like, don't know something why. structural, perhaps. Mm, yeah. yeah. Long time. Yeah. Wow. Well, nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Have well, a good you, day. <laughs> you stayed in, where did you stay in Snellin? Uh No, we were at uh, uh, St Edmunds Lane. And then we oh, were at Edmunds Lane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we moved to Ox Street. We were in Ox Street, yeah. Oxford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but now... We've moved around all over the place, and so this is like... Uh, but, it's a walk down memory lane. But you don't I, here now, then? No. 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 But I, I was last do, here two years ago in Abingdon. And um, just, just like, just for a day, just to sort of look around, because you know, it's summer. It's a very sort of 
uh, close to my heart. I love living here. And it's very calm and peaceful, and I do like that element to it. I can't live in concrete. Put me no. under my gold mud. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. uh, I can't live in concrete. Yeah. No, there's just there's lots something, of fresh air Something here. very calming about about Albandon. Yeah. Maybe it's by the river, perhaps. Well, it's very, very tranquil. And tranquil. Very, lots of people use it. When I was a young lad, there was no power boat. The only power boat was a steamer. Oh yeah. The rest of it was paddlers and pipes and rowing boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the steamer had power. Right. There was no um, um, launches. No, know. no. I'm going back before the war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was all paddlers and pumps. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Have We're going to enjoy the river a bit now. So. I just <laughs> take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. We're off to Bristol next to catch up with the great engineer, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Yes, really. Brunel's actually there. He's, um, he's collecting tickets at the museum. I'm very, very happy to say that we're actually joined by Isambard Kingdom Brunel himself. Absolutely, the very same. Now, of course, I am a pretty sturdy presence around these parts. And this here is the SS Great Britain. Once was wow. the largest ship on planet Earth when she was launched in 1843. This is the very dock that she was built in where she resides now, the Great Western Dockyard, custom built to accommodate her enormous size, 322 feet long, 98 meters. That means Mr. Usain Bolt could get from bow to stern in just under 10 <laughs> seconds, you see. Now, if we follow down this way, you will notice several things about the wonderful ship you see before you. Not only the glorious flags flying up and down at the rat lines and atop the mast there, the flags atop the mast are nation flags. This is exactly how she would have looked on launch day, the 19th of July, 1843. From bow to stern, those six masts were nicknamed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because sailors are a slightly peculiar bunch of people. Very sturdy, very foolhardy gentlemen. They would be out along the yard arms with just a thin bit of rope to keep them from the mercy of Mother Nature and the open oceans. The flags that you see going up along the rat lines, they are the letter flags this was how they communicated in those days. No texting, no internet, no Zoom, of course. This is the modern advent. I might be 215 years old. I know all about the latest technologies, you see. Now, the Great Britain sailed out of here. Her maiden voyage was two years later, going to New York, carrying passengers in the utmost of Victorian luxury. A year later, she was ran aground at Dundrum Bay when Captain Hoskin missed the lighthouse on the Isle of Man and she was beached on the coast of Northern Ireland, eventually bought by the Gibbs Bright Company, repurposed as an emigrant steam clipper going all the way to and from Australia. Most people going over there to capitalize on the gold rush that was occurring at the time. And after 30 years of passenger service, she was eventually repurposed once more as a cargo ship going all the way to San Francisco, taking Panath coal across the oceans. Eventually was badly damaged in a storm in 1886, badly blown off course and ended up in the Falkland Islands at Port Stanley where she remained there until 1970 when she was towed 8,000 miles across the open oceans and on the 19th of July, this important date in the calendar of the Great Britain, she was back in the dock where she was launched from 127 years to the day and now she has been here 51 years, over half a century, her gradual glorification taking its time. That is real gold on the stern of the ship, no expense spared in her restoration. And I think you'll agree she looks rather wonderful. That is a brief history of the SS Great Britain. I have been Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you very much, sir. Not a problem. And finally, who can forget the Mexican stall holder we spoke to in Camden Town? It's so nice. I haven't been to 
Camden Town for such a long time. Yeah. I I think it's been like maybe a year. No, like five. Really? <laughs> no. You live here? Yeah, I've lived here for about fifteen years. Why, where do you live? I live in Uxbridge, so it's like all the uh, other I side know, of it. I know, that's like so why. Hard to get here. No, but and the pandemic is, uh, yeah. So this, so this is like one of the first times that I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, good. Have a card. Follow us on Instagram. You see all the yeah, absolutely. No, I think that it's quite good having the day of the dad. Yes, of course, it's not Halloween. We're not no, Americans. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't celebrate Halloween, but in my house and we have things like that. No, it's quite good. Um, we are filming for our YouTube show. Right? So, so yeah, we are filming Camden Town, and then we're doing for a market. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to come. Here we are, the Mexican shop in Camden Town. We are the only one. So it's called La Marqueta. La Marqueta. La Marqueta. Yes. We have all the Mexican food to put, to snacks, the candies, the bread of the dead. They oh. is just made this morning. It's what we have in Mexico. All this bread. Oh wow. It's very nice. Yeah. So are all these things authentic Mexican? Of course, yes. All, every, all the candies I work with. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't normally see this flavors. I don't normally see Mexican places that swap. No, Whenever no, no, I no. come to these things and I buy a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I go, when I find something like this, I'm from Mexico, I buy, it's like my supermarket. It's like, okay, I this, 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 this. Yes, this. yes. <laughs> this is, oh my god, this is so good. I didn't think that we would find something like this, Marcus. Mm. So, I think you I might have to come back. Oh, I maybe will you will find another one, but not no, for these prices. Not gonna... And the people nice like you. <laughs> you know, I think it is the... Um, People that make the place, I right? Know. So, do a good job. For a lot, a lot of spices in Mexico, so, included cacao. Yeah. Yeah. Is mole used for like um, a casserole and no. stuff? Like no. No? I will tell you, the mole is traditional chicken. Oh, right, okay. So, you Cook the chicken in a separate pot with water, onion, you know, make a very nice like chicken a, soup. Like, like a, a chicken a pot? soup. Yeah, you know, in water you, you, you cook the, the chicken, but you put, you know, onion, carrot, just right. to make it very nice. And then this one in a separate pan, uh -huh. with that water, with that yeah. stuff, you dilute it until it's creamy. And then the yeah. cooked chicken, mm -hmm. I put it inside. And you serve it with uh, Chips? sesame, sesame seeds in uh, sesame. Sesame seeds. And you eat it, of course, with the tortilla. Tortilla is like a bread. But that's the way it's done. So we did, you dilute it with the chicken stock. So and this one is very good. So is this a spicy? Is it like. No. no. It has a lot of chilies and spices, <laughs> and yeah, but no, it's not. Okay. This one is oh, I so. Forgot. Which kind do you have? The original is this one. So the what? other one is green. Okay. But it's, it's made it with a lot As of I, oh leaves. My God. No, no, no. <laughs> Any of them is hot. It's, it's All right. Hot, no. it's so a, which one do you think would be good for us starter people? <laughs> so maybe I need to buy this too yes. because I don't have mole at home. No. <laughs> like, like, Honestly, it's, it's very difficult to make them, like, to make it. I have heard of mole, I've heard of it, but it's like, where do we buy the mole? In a Mexican shop. Right here? Yeah, because you know what, it's very difficult to make here. It's yeah. toasted and then they, in the, right. you bring it, you, how do you say, to does make it, it a paste. Does it make it like more, like more concentrated? Is it like better with it? This one is very concentrated. That's what you dilute it with the chicken right. stock from the chicken when you cook it. 
you dilute it and it's creamy. You t test it to yeah. see how, how it is. It's by your test. It has to be creamy. It doesn't have to be water you're running. It's creamy. I put the, ch the cooked chicken inside. It's how the way you do it in Mexico. Because my friend, Julio, he's from Spain, he likes the chicken and on top the mole. But put the chicken inside. It's much better. And then you put like the parsley or the other stuff to make it look better, right? On top? This one, <laughs> honestly, you just decorate it with sesame seeds. All right. Parsley and all this is not going with it. And we use coriander okay. more than parsley. Okay. In Mexico, yeah. So if you want, when you have your tacos, and yeah, yeah, yeah. put coriander on it. We use more coriander than parsley. Do I have to also add some chili to this or no. is this hot enough? As I like, oh, caliente. <laughs> <laughs> try it. When you dilute it, right. when you put okay. it in the stove, try it. Okay. I don't think you will need it. Okay, no, because it's like, ooh, too hot. <laughs> no, nah, you won't be like that. And the tortilla, you warm it before. And it will good. It's amazing. You have to have one of these. Looks like I'm going to be back in this shop before I know it. <laughs> well, we've had some absolutely fantastic guests over the past year. Who knows who will turn up in 2022? We have one more show for you this year. It's a New Year's Eve special. We are in Edinburgh for our big Hogmanay. See you then.